Good evening, everyone. Our microphone's a little bit hot, so we're going to turn that down just a bit. We're about ready to begin. We are going to get things rolling here in just a few minutes. We've got a new 3D printer we are going to get set up. Figured we'd hang out with everybody, see what was going on, and uh, spend some time with you. So we shall go ahead and get that taken care of here in a little bit. Make sure if you are here in the chat, say hi. Let me know that you're here as we finish getting a few things set up before we start the stream. Well, good evening, everybody. Hope you are all doing well. We have got a new 3D printer that we're gonna talk about here. And yes, I know it's a gaming channel, completely get that, but I absolutely love my 3D printing. We've got some great prints here, uh, such as our controller stands for the Nintendo Switch that we do. Uh, what else do we have? We got a bunch of cool stuff back behind here. We've got stands for the Nintendo Switch game cases. Whole lot of stuff I like to design. I like to go ahead and print to just go ahead and make my storage better, to make my game room more organized. And you guys don't get to see this part of my studio setup and whatnot a whole lot. We're actually in the unfinished part of my basement where I've got my Bamboo Labs P1S and P1P, but in the middle here, this is the new K1 from Creality. And I've been using Creality printers for a while. This is my first one that I have uh, right here. This is my K1, I'm sorry, this is my Ender 3 Max. And this is my second overall printer that I ever got, and I have modified the daylights out of it. Uh, what I love about it, it's got a pr big print area. What I hate about it, it's slow. Um, and overall, the print quality is okay. Uh, it's what I started with, uh, or second one that I really started with. But there have been so many advancements in recent years regarding quality, regarding print speed, that this pretty much is now obsolete. So we're gonna take this one, set it down, because we are retiring our original K, our original uh, Ender 3 Max, and uh, we are gonna get the K1 going here in just a second. If you are here in the chat, I see we got nine people watching. Make sure you say hi. So what's the deal with 3D printing? So in a nutshell, and let me know too if the music or anything is too loud. I've got my monitor in and it sounds okay to me, but if it needs to be tweaked, I can absolutely go ahead and make that change. So what I love about 3D printing is the fact that I can go from idea to concept and I don't need to buy anything. I can make it myself. Now this here, like I mentioned, this is the K1 from Creality. One of probably, uh, let's see, Albo, how you doing? Um, good to see you here. This is designed to be their Entry level fast printer, I would say, because there's the K1, there's also the K1 Max. Main difference between the two of them is the size of the print bed. This is the same size print bed as like the Ender 3s have. So it's a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter tall. So 220 millimeter, 220, 250 is what we're looking at here. So, uh, and this was sent to us by Sane Smart. Go ahead, I've got, if you're at all interested in this, I've got a link, to, link in the description where you can go ahead and check this out. Now, they also sent along some additional stuff for us here too. They sent us some of their high speed 3D printer filament. And the best way I can describe 3D printer filament, I've got a spool here, is it's like thick fishing line is really what it is. Um, I use what's called PLA. It tends to be um, more odor free. You can print a little bit faster. It does tend to be a little bit more temperature sensitive. So you don't want to leave stuff like this out in the car. Uh, would you be using this for repros? Um, no. This, this is to make like 
plastic type parts, not PCBs, if that's what you're thinking. So technically I have printed shells for games. Um, I've actually done a few for the Immortal John Hancock. John, if you're watching this, I need to send those out to you, uh, but you can use it for stuff like that. So they did send us some of their fast printing PLA. In addition, we also have two upgrades for it. And I don't know if we're gonna do both of them here tonight. Uh, this is the high flow nozzle kit. So basically it's what the filament flows through when it gets heated up and everything to print on the print bed. And then out of the box, this does not come equipped with a camera of any type. There is an optional camera kit you can get for about $30. That's what we did here, pretty simple to install. Um, one of the things that, now I haven't obviously printed on this, but I gotta give a real quick shout out to Todd over at Retro Frog. You know, this is one of the, <laughs> excuse me, one of the many examples of things that you can do with 3D printing. This is his stand that he sent me uh, to check out and kind of give them some feedback on for the new RetroTink 4K. Uh, I've got one for the 5X. I absolutely love his design. This will hold the 4K along with the remote. Um, Got to give him a little bit of feedback. He doesn't have a 4K yet to check it out. Um, Tolerance just could be just a little bit tighter. You can see it's a little bit of wobble, but that's again one of the great things about 3D printing. You can test stuff like this and see how it can actually go ahead and get better. You can instead of having to spend thousands of dollars on molds and injection molding, you can spend you know, an hour or two in your slicing software and design something and make tweaks on the fly to make each revision better and better and better. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to open this up. Now, before I get started, I gotta give shout outs to a couple other people as I drop that off of the side there. So first and foremost, Uncle Jesse, make sure if you're into 3D printing or at all interested in 3D printing, check him out. He has got a fantastic printer channel. Um, he, when he opened, I think it was the K1 Max, the larger one, uh, he leaned it to the side to put on the feet and he broke the glass door. We are gonna do everything in our power not to do that. Uncle Jesse, I'm gonna to try to learn from your mistakes. Uh, the other person I gotta give a shout out to is Chuck Hellebuck over at Filament Friday. He has been just a wealth of knowledge and information and help to me in this channel. So definitely if you are at all interested, uh, make sure to check out those two channels. They are awesome. So um, one of the nice things too about these series of printers is the fact that um, there's not a whole lot of assembly. It's pretty much assembled in here. I've just got to find, here's my Zecto blade. Now, in addition to the couple of upgrades that I mentioned, I have 3D printed one. And again, credit to Chuck over at Filament Friday for talking about this. This is designed to hold the spool of filament on the back. Well, I don't want that. I wanted a side filament holder. So he actually shared the files and this is the one I screwed up for a side filament holder. I actually have a new one here that I printed just before we started the stream. And yes, we cannot forget our favorite Hobbit, Jay over at Square Pegs. Awesome dude. Uh, I know he and Game Dad just went to Torg last weekend. So good to see stuff from that. So just some insulation on the top here. And then we also have, there's the lid to the printer. This is a fully enclosed printer, which is really cool too. Um, so it can handle exotic type materials like flexibles. That's called TPU. If you're familiar with like flexible sort of materials that you use for cell phone cases, um, that's basically what TPU uh, utilizes on there. And uh, so that's what we're gonna, you know, we may or may not have it enclosed. For normal type of filaments like PLA, PLA plus, you don't need to have the full enclosure, but nice to know that it's in there. So nice foam padding, holding everything in. And then there's just a bag in here that has everything self-contained. I'm gonna set the box down and lift the bag up. As I knock stuff off on my shelf behind me. All right, here we go. And taking a look inside of our box, nothing else in here. So we can take that, pitch that away, kind of fix that. 
And if you have questions as we're going along, I do have my laptop over here, so I am monitoring the chat. Uh, let's see, little foamy pad there to uh, store the power cord. I do apologize, we do have the puppies upstairs. If you do hear them bark or fight or rustle, you may hear that, but we shall see. So we will pull out one foamy domey. And looks like we've got an accessory sort of pack in here. Thanks for hanging out on a Friday night. I didn't even realize that, about 8.30, so good, uh, good to have everybody kind of hanging out here tonight. Let's see, looks like that's the touchscreen display. And we've got the rubber feet right there. And one thing, just as a heads up, uh, we are streaming using our Rockware RC20 camera. So I can actually zoom in, zoom out, and change our angle of attack here. So if there's anything you want to see closer up as we go through this, please don't hesitate to say anything. Uh, we'll definitely do that. Uh, filament spool holder here. Our other two feet. And I apologize if you get a little bit of extra glare off the dome. Um, it's just the way the light is down here. Okay, this is cool. So I was kind of expecting a full spool of filament, but they actually include, this is probably, so the way that these spools of filament are sold, generally speaking, is it's a one kilogram spool. This is a 250 gram spool, so uh, this is 25% of this. I was hoping for a full size spool, so I'm even more thankful that Sane Smart did send us uh, one of their spools of filament. Inside our other little part box here, so we've got a few tools here, so that is if you ever get a, um, I'll put it kind of here so you can see it contrasting against me. If you ever get a jam in the nozzle, this will help kind of push filament out. I've got a magnetic bar up top there too. Uh, it does come with a series of Allen wrenches here, a couple of, uh, let's see, there's a couple screws in there, it looks like a flat blade screwdriver and some, uh, uh, a wrench basically to change the nozzle. Again, go right up there with those. I have to admit, this is one of the things I was hoping that this would come with, and I'm glad that it does because the Creality's are really nice. Uh, and I know this sounds really dumb, but just the little nippy side cutters to go ahead and cut your filament. Uh, absolutely love that. And then let's see, this is a 10 and 12 millimeter crescent wrench. And this is again, just a magnetic bar up here. There is, this is interesting to see. So in the past, we have gotten, um, like scrapers like this guy here in the box with uh, other like Ender 3s, Ender 3 v 2s the Maxis, so on and so forth. This is a plastic one. And the reason not to go metal and to go plastic in here is so that you don't damage the print bed if you do have a print that gets stuck uh, on it. Let's see who's here. Sci-Fi Nation kind of looks like a metal kebab skewer. You know what? That's a good way to look at it, my friend. You silly Canuck you. Now, unfortunately, plastic ain't magnetic, so we'll just have to toss that there for now. And then the other minus thing, I'm sorry, your French, your French Newfie, that's what it is, uh, is it does come with a thumb drive with uh, 3D printer files already stored on it. The nice thing about this printer is it has built-in network connectivity, so you can actually send files while well, you're working on your computer to the printer itself. You don't actually have to physically upload anything to the printer by, you know, before is either an SD card, micro SD card. This can do it via Wi-Fi. But if you prefer, you can also do it using a thumb drive too, which is nice. As I almost drop it, but I didn't. I caught it. Make sure you guys check out Sci-Fi Nation's channel. Put your link in the chat if you would like. He does a lot of sci-fi stuff. What can I say? So we've got these two boxes cleared out. Toss those aside, another little piece of foam. Now, uh, actually, we're gonna leave that there for a second because I wanna do a couple other things first. Uh, I'm gonna pull out the last little chunk down here, maybe. I may have to remove the screws. Nope, all right, popped right out. So it did have another piece of support foam in there. And is there anything? 
There you go, make sure you check out Sci-Fi Nation. There is a piece of cardboard here, but I think that's just a liner on the bottom, so we're done with that guy. And it does have a flexible build plate on it. What this means, some printers come with glass print beds, uh, and that's what my Ender Ender 3 Max came with was glass. Um, so what's nice about this is you can just flex it to pop a part off. Um, this is very smooth, which, or, although it does have a sticker on the top of it, with Creality's machine, they actually still recommend using some sort of, sort of adhesive to help uh, adhesion to the print bed. A glue stick is generally what you would use. Hairspray works as well. You can also get print beds that have a texture to them so that way you don't need to utilize any sort of separate um, adhesive. And one of the things I want to check, I actually have my Ender 3 V2 Neo down below and I believe these are the same size. They are, so you can see here, uh, and this is a textured bed here, so we are going to see if this print bed will work with this printer when we get there. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out tonight. Different sort of video, I mean, I know, you know, gaming channel, what the hell are you doing talking about 3D printing? I love 3D printing, what can I say? As you can see, you can see I've got three sitting back here, two more down there, and one more here. We're going farming. We farm with integrity around here. So unlike Uncle Jesse, we are going to put the printer this way, turn it to the side, and we are going to take it out of the bag there. Very well put together. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Um, and to put the feet on, it just goes right like that. That's actually pretty easy. Let me do this. Like I mentioned, I've got our uh, camera here where I can change the view so that way we will zoom in a little bit and bring it down and again you can see the feet just go right on there like that and then right like that so basically what Uncle Jesse did is he leaned the printer this way and he took the tape off of the door and the door swung wide open it just broke the glass and everything it was I want to say it was funny, but I know what it was one of those things of, oh crap, you know? Uh, looks like there is like a film on the plexiglass here. We'll bump you up a little bit higher here. And we do have like a strapping tape or so that's keeping the door closed as it is. Listen to some GameCube music here because it's a great system. And uh, who was it? I think it was Chit Chat Gaming posted earlier today that today is actually the anniversary date of the launch of Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube. Okay. And as you can see here, this is just peeling right up. And that is trying to peel down. Don't do that! Now, one of the cool things about this too is it actually has, I believe it has a hardwired ethernet connection or am I on crack? You know, I might be on crack on that. So we got that one off there. Yeah, these are really nice feet, I've gotta say, so I'm gonna bring you out here for a second. So one of the things I do have to say on my Bamboo Labs um, is the fact that these come out of the box with just like real small rubber feet. They do sell an optional foot setup um, and they actually have two variants of it. That's the original one here and uh, I'll zoom you in on that. So that's what it is, it has kind of a cushy design to it. The problem with this is it did not fit very well in the holes in the bottom of the printers. That anytime you lifted the printer up, like say that something rolled under it, these would always pop out. Now they have redesigned them, so the new ones are a lot better than these, but you know, these just go right on. Um, you know, a lot, a lot better design I think on this than this. And I love my bamboo printer, so there is that. Found Simpsons Hit and Run for GameCube. That's awesome. 
I don't know that I have played that since it originally came out. Okay. So, do we have, we do not. I was just checking to see, whoop, well. So them feet's popped off on this side, so we're gonna lift up and then over. And then we also have another piece of plexi here that is getting protected, which we will pull that protection off. Sounds like the boys are getting a little bit rambunctious upstairs. You can maybe hear them wrestling with each other. They are coming up on five months old. Hard to believe that they'll be five months old in two weeks. All right. Excuse me. All right, so there we have that and that. Now we will go ahead and pull this off and there is a protective film on the face of it. Okay. All right, now, as you can see here, I'm gonna actually pan this down a little bit so you can take a closer look. One of the things about the K1 and the larger K1 Max is it actually has an area here for the touch screen to be attached. And that's our touch screen right there, which we'll install in a moment. You know, a little extra dealio right there. Let me know too in the comments, have you ever thought about getting into 3D printing? And if so, why haven't you? Um, so the, the interesting thing about 3D printing now is we're getting better quality at a lower price than ever before. Um, I mean, these right now you can get through uh, the affiliate link down below in the comments for $519, I believe, right now at the time of this stream. Um, originally launched at $699, so, I mean, it's already come down in price fairly quickly. We're going to take this, we're going to rotate that. And then, yeah, like I say, when Uncle Jesse broke his, this basically flung wide open, super extended here, and cracked right at the, uh, the hinges. So I feel for him on that one. I'm gonna pop out our last little piece of foam. Now, Sci-Fi, you say you found it. You had a copy that you had to find, or you found one in a store? Well, that sucks. So I'm gonna have to print a new mount here because when I pulled out the foam, we broke off a piece of the top here for the uh, chain cable. Well, crap. We're gonna pull out the lid now and the, uh, the instructions. Now, I will say a lot of this thus far, very similar to Creality's, or yeah, of course it's gonna be similar to Creality's machine. It's a Creality machine, uh, very similar to Bamboo. So you do get an after service warranty card, so I'll, uh, I'll have to reach out to them. And another little dealio card there. One of the things Creality has been doing is you do have some stickers that people can put on laptops and such. And then nice instruction manual here. One thing I wanna check and see is Let's see, in my store for $5.99 disc only, but it's in good condition, awesome. All right, so next up, we are going to install the screen. And for that, we will give you a little bit better view here. Not to let you see my junk, but you gotta kinda look at my junk a little bit, I guess. And this does have a uh, spot here for the ribbon cable to attach to. Maybe, how does that go in there?
There we go. And then get it lined up there. And you'll slide it down. Oh, come on, you. What we're gonna do, can I, there we go. Don't break the glass. <laughs> Let's see, welcome to Let's Figure It Out Together with Gary, absolutely. Gary has a rear engine. His trunk is in the front. Not trunk, junk. So that's interesting. That Okay, there's that pulled off. Rax, you need to get into 3D printing, man. I think you would love this. And then, let's see, we've got that lined up. Now, there should be three screws that we have to remove. See what I did there? Three screws he got to remove. Somewhere. Where are we at? Because the bed should be locked down out of the box. Well, if you need help getting set up, dude, I would be more than happy to tell you to pound sand. I, I help you out. All right, so we need to remove three screws A, B, and C according to the location of the yellow arrow. So inside here, um, you can't see it, but we'll turn it this way here in a second. Now, really try hard not to break the glass. Uh, we are going to remove three screws. And there's, you can kind of see maybe the yellow arrow in the back there. Yeah, kind of, sort of. So for that, where is my two millimeter? There we go. Hopefully you didn't hear me fart, but you probably did. So they do include like this little packet of Allen wrenches and stuff. I hate these. I would rather use real tools. Uh, and that's one of the things my RC stuff has really come in handy to go ahead and you know keep this stuff going well or, or just be more efficient about it. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use our filament there. There you go. You dirty rotten. Of course you're a little bit short in stature. Let's see here. Can I, I'm gonna bring down my other light here. So I should have a screw here. I wonder if it's a two and a half. It's gotta be a two and a half. Let's see if the manual actually calls out what it is. So I know a lot of people today are excited about Super Mario uh, RPG. Have you picked it up today? Now, I'm almost wondering, it almost looks like it's Got those removed already, but I could be on crack. Would not be the first time, would not be <laughs> the last time. Let me see here. I may have to use the crappy tools. This almost sounds like Sonic the Hedgehog. You don't have a switch? Well, that sounds like a personal problem, man. You know, they do sell them in Canada. And French Canadians can get them. Try 
try this guy here. I am not feeling a screw down there. But it is locked down, so there's got to be one in there. Well, let's actually grab the tools they provide. There's a reason they provide them, right? Doesn't help with the lack of funds. That's what credit cards are for, man. Make bad life choices. That's my motto. Let's see. Yeah, that feels like a two as well, so not that one. Let's see if we got this guy here. Well, what in the world? Is it a 1.5? It would be nice if they would have said what the screw size is in the manual. Hmm. This don't make a whole lot of sense. Tell you what, dangle, dangle, shoot. Because those are two. And those need to stay on. Those are not the screws to remove. Right. A, B, C. Okay, I can follow that unless, you know what? Are they under the yellow? Am I looking at the wrong spot? Would not be the first time, won't be the last time. Nope, and it was pointing to where it was, so I don't know what Dunn gives here, tell you what. So this feels like a two and a half. Double check that, that's not a two. Ah, that is a two, okay. So that's a 1.5. That's gotta be a two and a half. How's everything that video you posted about? Kev, I have no idea what video you're talking about. I'm sorry. Since we post a video every day, you gotta be uh, a little bit more specific than that, sorry. I don't know why we can't get this silly thing off. I have problems getting things off, I guess. I'm gonna check this here. Yeah, I can't see anything in there. So I'm gonna turn this towards me, fire up my flashlight and see See if I can't see. See? See. I sure don't see a screw down there. Take a look here. Don't break the glass. Uh, Rax is getting off. Oh, the PlayStation Portal? Yeah, that still no PlayStation Portal for me. Uh, no idea what's going on with that at this point in time.
Yeah, there's nothing tying it down that I can see here. We're gonna just double check the back here. Yeah, that really bums me out that I broke that clip on the back right away, but like I say, it could have been worse. Could have been much, 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 much worse. Interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to see if we can't uh, get everything rolling here quickly. But one thing we're going to do first is I'm going to pop this off my other printer. And just one thing I wanted to show you real quick too is the difference in the size of the print beds between the bamboos and between the K1. So this is the bamboo um, P1S print bed. Here is the, the Creality K1. So you can see this is a 253 by 253 millimeter print bed. Again, this is 200 by, or I'm sorry, 220 by 220. So there is that. Um, so pop that back down. PlayStation Portal has no internet browser, so connecting to a public Wi-Fi that requires a quick check won't. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, I don't disagree that that is something that <laughs> they've done screwed up. And when it comes to screwing up, I'm pretty good at that. Tell you what, dango dango sheep. Okay. So we are going to throw the top on here because right now it's topless and uh, sometimes it's inappropriate to be topless. So what is everybody up to this weekend in the US here? Uh, like normal people, not people who are um, French newfies, we celebrate Thanksgiving in November, not October. Uh, so anybody have some exciting plans as we're getting closer to Thanksgiving next week? Let's see, so the top will go on like so. There's that. Awesome, going to uh, Grax's topless, yeah buddy. Um, so what we are going to do here is the way the, the spool holder is designed originally is to go on the back and that's inconvenient. So there is a 3D printed holder that we have that we're gonna put in here that'll hold it on the side. So I'm gonna slide this stuff down real quick and we are going to turn off our flashlight because uh, we don't need the flashlight no more. There we go. Now to do this, I also picked up some slightly longer screws here to go through this and that hole right there. And these are just two millimeter screw holes. So I'm gonna pop that guy out. Pop this guy out. And the bottom one was the longer of the two. So remember that. So I want to remind me if I forget, the bottom one was the longer the two working overnight here, but out every, all right. Just close the store back in a bit, okay. All right. Oh yeah. Let me grab my scissors. And these are just, you know, simple three by, what is this? This is a three by 16 millimeter. Uh, got them and save big money at Menards by doing it. Oh, Menards. And actually, I'm probably not gonna use the included filament holder. I've got an upgrade one on my Ender 3 
Max Neo that's sitting here. And this one actually is ball bearing supported where this one, the filament just spins on the spool. Since I don't use that one a whole lot anymore, I'm gonna probably, like I say, pilfer that, uh, that off of there. So as you can see, this just screws right into the side. We're gonna leave it loose and grab the other longer one. Now, one of the things I gotta say, if you are gonna get into 3D printing, get a decent set of Allen wrenches. Um, these are pretty much for my RC stuff. And like, this is a 15 year old Sportworks two millimeter Allen wrench. And like, I use this stuff all, all the time on my printers. It's so much more convenient. Also, just the other night, watched the new Flash movie on uh, HBO Max. Oof, that was that was a rough watch. The Flash was the worst part of the Flash movie. All right, there we are. I may have to go to the longer screw on the top too, because this doesn't feel amp. We're gonna go double the double long screws here, so. I had, again, Chuck Hellebuck had mentioned um, using something like this on, he has the K1 Max, that's the bigger version. Um, and he used a slightly shorter one on the top. But for me, that slightly shorter one didn't cut it. Now, I will say if I wasn't doing the stream right now, I would already be up and printing. And that's nothing against anyone here. Just taking my time to kind of show What's happening? What's a happening, the hot stuff? No more Yankee my wanky. The donger need food. And yeah, we are just gonna unscrew this. Maybe, maybe not. You know what? I may not be able to use this. Or actually, you're looking at my hind end, aren't you, right now? Yeah, I can feel you. You're undressing me with your eyes. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, so we'll just use this one for now. See, the difference between this one and that one is th that one is actually held on by, there's a nut on the back that you tighten it up with. Um, this, as you can see, you just put it in and twist it. That actually holds really, really nice. Now, there is another plate here that will go on uh, here, I think goes like so. And then there's another little plate here that we have to mount, which I have right there. So yeah, we're gonna go there and there. You know what? This one I may have to use those other screws for. That's what that may have been for. We shall see. And you know what, this is one of the cool things about 3D printing is the fact that you can just like you can modify it to whatever you personally need or want uh, fairly easily. And you can 3D print a lot of these accessories too. Like, you know, this this took about an hour to print and I actually printed, printed it at a fairly high resolution just so that, um, you know, it would be strong, have a little bit more strength to it. Yeah, that may be a little bit too short of a screw too. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna, so the whole idea behind that is there is, I'm gonna show you a part on the back that I was gonna move to the front, but we're not gonna be able to do that here tonight, but I'll still be able to use the, um, the side spool holder. So, basically what will happen, uh, where did I set the remote? Where did I set the camera remote? It's right in front of me, dummy. So the filament is now gonna go here and it'll wrap around to this piece here to come up and go into the printer. Um, I can show you with this here, just some white PETG. So it'll come up here and just go right up the urethra, uh, right up the tube here. Now, the other plate that I have that'll be mounting here, what it'll do is it'll just take that bend out of it so it'll come up here and then come up and go in. So um, it'll still work with this. It'll just be a little bit more efficient once I get the other uh, slightly longer screws set up. So I think at this point we are ready to go ahead 
and plug her on in. Uh, did I put that screw back in? I did not. So we'll do that real quick. Yes, the monitor is probably going to be better than the phone, especially if it's an eye fail. Thanks everybody for hanging out here tonight. Really do appreciate it. All right, so we are going to grab the power cord. from right here and I actually have a uh, an outlet strip back behind here we'll get everything set up and that will come around to that side of the camera here then too. Uh, one final thing to do is there is a switch on this side that will go between uh, 220 and 110 volts. We're just going to make sure that we are set to 110. And it looks like we are. So there's that. So I may use, uh, another foot came off here, I may use like some shoe goo or something to, to kind of keep that from popping off. All right. Let's see if we have enough slack here. Rax, quit undressing me with your eyes. I can feel it. That's for the OnlyFans. Now plugged in, we will turn it on and see if we get anything. Fingers crossed. Uh, that's no bueno. Let me double check that we've got the voltage set right. Nice thing is it would just be under volted versus being over volted. I thought we were set to 110. I'll double check it there. They could have made this less convenient. I don't know how, but I think they could have. All right. Well, I don't know if we were set right before or not, but we are set right now. Fired up. You can see the display is rocking and rolling here. Let's see, machine starting. Speaking machine, I'm going to move my lappy tappy over here just so I can see what we're doing. And get you all a good shot here of what we're doing. I 
So English is, and this is touchscreen, so English, remove the three screws A, B, and C. I, I didn't see any. Welcome to the Creality 3D printer, okay. Set up your network. So we are gonna set that up. Yes, you're gonna see my keister for a second. Time zone. All right, what time zone? We're central, so I have no idea what we are. Um, does it say in the manual what the different time zones are? I have no idea. We'll use that for the time being. Please use Creality Cloud app to scan the QR code to bind the device. So just grabbing my Samsung phone here. Come on, you scan. Nope. Oh, I haven't downloaded the Creality Cloud app yet. That's important, isn't it? So we'll go ahead and download that. Um, not fixing. This is a new 3D printer for us, Kev. So, um, just going through the unboxing setup. So we're going to skip that for now. Self-inspection. Please place the printing platform. The self-check process is expected to take. Uh, you can see here that it's cutting off the text, so. Nozzle is heating. So let's check in that. And the nozzle is underneath the uh, top part right here. You know me. So back that out just a little bit so you can see. This door is like my bathroom door. It doesn't want to stay open, damn it. So here's our print head nozzle is in that part right there. Uh, Let's see, input shaping. So that is basically one of the things that compensates when the head moves back and forth so quickly, uh, what kind of keeps it from um, having the vibrations and whatnot cause issues. Now here we're gonna see in a second, I may have to really quick shut it off. Like I say, I did not see the three retention screws in the bed. If the bed does not move in a second, um, the bed is going up on its own. It did not have those retention screws. That's crazy. And yeah, there's a screw hole here and there. Yeah, there were, I was, oh, that was frustrating. So good to see that I can get that last little piece of foam out. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually see here. Sorry for walking in front of the camera, but I'm gonna put the, filament box there there we go just so you can kind of see what's going on so basically what it's doing is it's raising the print bed and it's going to take several measurements as it goes across to make sure that it's level and if it's not it's going to store in the software where where the imperfections basically lie um, so that way you'll get a good smooth first layer. That is the key to having a successful print is making sure that the bed is perfectly level when it goes and prints, you get good adhesion that way too. Now one thing I will say, I'm a little surprised that they did not include is a glue stick. In, in the past they have. Um, I'll have to dig one of mine out while this is going through and doing this. And when I say glue stick, I am literally meaning like Elmer's glue stick. Uh, let me grab my box of printer crap here. And yeah, I mean, this is quite literally what I'm talking about that I will use to make sure that we have good bed adhesion on here, at least initially. And now, while that's doing it, now it's interesting too, this is 
pretty slow um, for doing an auto bed level check. Um, I'm not sure if there's a firmware update or anything along those lines that we'll have to do. <coughs> Raise this up just a little bit so you can kind of Again, just seeing, we're gonna zoom in a little bit for you too, because watching these print heads move, it's pretty damn cool. And it's just crazy how fast these go. Although right now, I will admit, it ain't going very fast, so. But what it's doing, and I don't know if you can hear it, it's actually slowly vibrating the head and increasing the speed at which it's doing that. It's essentially reading the, or recording the resonance of the print head, so that way it can compensate for those movements as it goes through side to side, up and down. Can I scroll the text sideways? No, on the display here, sci-fi, no, I can't. Uh, surprise, the door doesn't have a safety. Yeah, um, and it may end up being, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit better once I get it set back on the, the main shelving unit. And you know, I don't know if this table is, is the most level right now uh, or even this floor. And while it's doing that, we have installed the Creality. Wow. Which way we gotta go? We gotta come that way. Well, we've got the app installed. You can see I've got the app installed now on the phone. I still can't believe that they didn't include the screws. I have never had that happen. Now it looks like it has finished doing the initial input shaping steps. And again, that's where it's just, it's hard to see because it's doing it so quickly back and forth, but it's literally just moving the print head back and forth left to right to measure the vibration through the system to compensate for that movement as it prints. I should have grabbed a chair. Let's see. Okay, got it, Ron. Great stream. Thanks for the shout out. Shared. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, my friend. Now I think you might be able to see the head moving just a little bit. And it looks like it's going backwards and forwards where before it was going side to side. Tell me no lies, knocking me out with those American thighs. Take another stare, had me fighting for air. She told me to come, but I was already there. I am old, what can I say? And so is ACDC. We're gonna go grab a chair real quick while that's going through that. Now, one of the differences between the K1 here and my other bamboo printers is this just prints a single color, where with the bamboos, it has what they call the AMS or the 
automatic material system that allows you to print multicolor at one time. So for example, you know, I can do, come on you, something like that through the bamboo printers that I would have to physically swap the filaments on the K1 to be able to do. So um, just as a heads up on there, this is really taking a long time. I'm floored at how long this is taking. <coughs> now I will say build quality wise, I'm liking what I've seen so far. Um, you know, the case does feel like it's it's a good quality and everything. We're going to back out a little bit here. Yep. Out, not down, dummy. There we go. So, I mean, I, I like the fact that it's glass here. Um, the plexiglass on the side, I know a couple people have complained about. I have not had an issue with it, uh, or I don't mind it at all. Uh, looking at my P1... S in the background, that's the one with the red on the side, that's a plastic shell on that. The P1P uh, with the yellow on it, that doesn't have any kind of a casing to it at all. Um, for common materials like PLA, having it open like that, not a problem. If I did more exotics like PETG uh, or flexibles, having that enclosure like either this has or the P1S is definitely more desirable. Um, yeah, this has really taken forever. Okay, let's see. Like I have, oh, now it's going through and doing the auto leveling. So it completed the input shaping. And what it's going to do is it's going to come down and probe the bed. And I think it's going to do nine spots. It's either nine or 12. And generally speaking, it's three across and then three back, three across, three back. So it'll do the center first. So there just read where the center location was. And what it was doing there was just taking some rapid measurements based on pressure against the nozzle, against the top and everything in relation to the print bed itself. And just so you can see that I'm not smoking crack there, it's telling me right there that I had three screws to remove. There weren't no three screws in this thing. Man, that slammed into the back there, I'll say that much. This initial setup is taking considerably longer than I anticipated. It's actually moving the nozzle. Um, let me zoom you in here. So you can see the nozzle moving to the camera's uh, right. Wow, holy cow, spooling up the fans. So we're gonna shut that door there just to, I mean, it cuts down on the noise a little bit, but that sucker's still really, really loud. Um, and it does not completely seal off down here because it has to have an opening for the, um, here, we'll give you a closer look. So down below next to the screen, there is an opening in the glass for it to go around the screen right there. So 
you do get some noise coming through uh, through there. Now, interesting as well, it looked like it actually extruded a little bit of filament from uh, the factory up top. I'll come back down. Now, the way that this is different too than other printers that we've had in the past, as you can see, the bed is moving up and down, the print head moves side to side, front to back. In the past, we had what was called a bed slinger. So the bed would move forward and back and the nozzle would move up and down, side to side. So the nozzle is still moving in two different axes. Uh, it's just the way that or the direction of those axes is slightly different. Again, I do have to thank the team over at Sane Smart for sending us this to check out. Um, you know, without them, this would not be possible at all. If you're thinking at all about getting a K1 uh, or a K1 Max or pretty much any Creality machine, they actually have, or I have the link down below uh, in a uh, in the description here of this stream. Uh, and I'm actually going to, we're not going to be streaming a whole lot longer on this. Uh, we're going to get through this initial setup. Um, make sure that you follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on X, and then on here as well. Uh, we are going to do some test prints, and I will share those results uh, through those other, um, other avenues. I would say we're probably a solid 10 minutes into this initial setup right now, um, which it... Again, I was not expecting it to be quite that long. A uh, couple initial feelings on this versus my bamboos. Again, it is a longer setup. Um, I do like the touch screen, at least a little bit that I've been able to use it. That's a huge improvement over what the Bamboo Labs P1P and P1S have. Now there is a, uh, it's called the X1 Touch Project. It's a homebrew project to get a better touch screen onto the Bamboo Labs printers. That's not official, it's homebrew. Um, and it's very limited in what you can do with it. Um, very little to do to get this out of the box and get to this point. I mean, I spent more time trying to find those missing screws than it took me to get the initial setup and everything going on here. Uh, build quality feels really, really nice. Uh, the feet could fit a little bit tighter on the bottom um, than what they did. Um, again, having some kind of an adhesive there would have been nice just to have them stick onto the bottom of the casing. Uh, and I do wish that the door completely sealed and that there was a different location for the print screen uh, than what we have now on here. Having that cut out in the door, you know, you are going to get a little bit of heat escaping from there. Some odors can escape if you are using an ABS material uh, to print with. So that's important to kind of keep in mind there too. Print bed size, I wish they would have gone slightly bigger on the print bed. Uh, you know, I, I really like that 250 by 250 or 253 by 253 that Bamboo has on theirs. 220 by 220, I mean, it's their, their traditional um, print bed size from the Ender 3s. So uh, there's that. So we have now completed our self-test. Let's go click here. And we'll go into the screen for just a moment. And then this is just showing our current temperatures and everything. I'm going to plug the thumb drive in and see what we have for default files on here. USB driver inserted. You know, the one thing I haven't done either, let me go here. Um, it does have an online manual option here on the display. I want to see if it has a um, 
option to update the firmware because this is on version 1.2.9.12. Uh, currently the latest version, okay. So there's that time zone. Yeah, it doesn't, I wish it would just say like Central, East, Mountain, or Pacific, you know what I mean? So there's that. It's gone through and done the self-test. Uh, screen off after three minutes. I can actually make the screen brighter or dimmer if I want. I'm dim enough as it is, so I want to have it pretty bright uh, as we go through here. Let's see, TNT, I'm dynamite. Yep, very true. Uh, file, so let's take a look here. First layer testing, we can do a cat. There is the Benchy, and it is saying it will print in 15 minutes. Uh, we are going to utilize Bamboo's included filament here just to get a Benchy tested out and printed. So what a Benchy is, it's, it's a boat is what it is. And it's one of those that it, I don't wanna say that it stress tests um, your settings and everything, but it is one of those where um, it will show basically print quality because there's uh, things called overhangs on here that if you're getting excessive stringing or layer issues or, or anything along those lines that it will basically give you give you an idea of what's going on here. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do before we start our Benchy is, you know, we will load our filament up, but I am going to apply some glue stick, and I have to admit, I hate that idea. I hate the fact that this utilizes a glue stick for bed adhesion uh, when you could have some kind of a textured plate that would address that issue, and, you know, I, I may end up picking up a, uh, a textured plate for this because Adhesive sucks, it just does, and, and that's a bummer. But that's not on Sane Smart, that is on Creality, and again, make sure you check out the uh, link down below if you wanna check one of these out through Sane Smart. Thank you again to those guys for sending us one of these at no cost to check out. Um, as you can tell too, they are not approving any of the content or anything before we go live. Um, it's just one of those things that I really do appreciate. Okay, now we're gonna switch this instead of that. Well, if I go that way. Mm. Well, that's gonna be the best way to go here. Yeah, I am gonna go back that way. And I may actually take the side spool holder off for now. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna take the side spool holder off. I'm gonna go back to the rear spool holder until I can get the, the longer screws for that adapter plate. Um, and the main thing here is just making sure that the, the filament doesn't unwind uh, in a way that will be a pain. But as you can see with the way I've got my printer set up behind me, with the printer basically completely now obscuring the filament on the back, you can't see what I'm doing at all. Um, when I've got it set up here on my shelving unit, it's gonna be a pain if I use that rear spool holder, unless I go to like where I've got one of my other printers here and I don't wanna do that. Okay, and we are going to, we have to unlock. Oh, it was unlocked, okay, good. Unlock to put our filament in. There we go, and we will Lock it down, lock it down. And where did I put my glue stick? There we go. And for this, I am literally just going to pull out the print bed. And yeah, it actually did extrude a little bit of filament down here when it was doing the test. And did not realize this had a protective film on this side too, so ha, that's no bueno. So we have, says this side is A plate. Please apply glue before print. It says that right at the top, so we are going to do that right now. I hate glue sticks, and I have not had to use them with the bamboos, so. But it is what it is, right? Yeah. We 
We've got that loaded. We've got that loaded. We will put the lid uh, back on. There's that. And now we will initiate a print and we're gonna start wrapping things up here again. I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, keep an eye on Twitter and Instagram tonight. We're gonna to do the, the Benchy and we are going to print. You know, go through and do a calibration beforehand. Um, you know, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out tonight, for sharing one of my other passions with me. I really uh, do appreciate that. Um, this says it'll be about a 15 minute print, and that's one of the things beforehand, a print like this would have taken 45 minutes to an hour on one of my traditional, like an Ender 3 V2s. Um, and not only is it faster, the quality will be better too. So um, one of the things about 3D printing is what's called layer height. And that's basically the thickness of each of, of the layers as it goes on here. Um, to get speed out of my old printers, I would have to print at what was called a 0.28 layer height. So it's 0.28 millimeter tall for each layer. The lower the number, the higher the resolution, the better the print quality will look. I can print at a point, you know, basically have a 0 0.10 layer height and still be faster than a 0.28. Um, and it looks, the, the model will look so much better. Um, so I've just, these core, this is called a core XY design. Uh, as far as the printer itself, I absolutely love what they what they <laughs> what they represent, um, and what they mean to just creators in general. This has been um, since June that I've gotten into this style of printer with the P1P and then the P1S later on, and now here with this, um, I can print out better quality prints. I can reduce my cost of goods sold, and I can pass that reduced cost over to people who want to pick stuff up uh, through our 3D printer website. Speaking of which, keep an eye out this weekend until probably the Tuesday, Wednesday after Cyber Monday, we will be running a, a sale over on our 3D printer store. So. Um, most things will be probably at least 10% off. And we do have some other items, some of our overstock still from the um, uh, Utah Retro Game Swap that uh, we're still heavy on a few items that are still on sale at pretty big discounts. So, um, but we are going to let this go ahead and do its thing and print. And we will share the results later on tonight, like I mentioned, on uh, either Twitter or Instagram or as a community post or something like that. But uh, until then, until next time, uh, we are going to be checked out, gone.